I decided to write about the takeover of the American Embassy in Tehran in 1979 because it's a dramatic story that had always interested me and because I felt that the United States was headed all through the 1990s toward a collision with militant Islam and that the country of Iran was really at the center of that. So the episode in 1979 of the takeover of the American embassy assumes a sort of pivotal position in modern American history. It was a very important story, and when I researched it, I saw that, much to my surprise, no popular historian or journalist had ever written about the whole story. There had been a lot of books written on the subject, but they were all about little pieces of the story. Individual hostages had written about their experiences and Members of the rescue mission had written about the rescue mission. Uh, members of the Carter administration, including President Carter himself, had addressed it in their various memoirs. And then there were a number of academics who had written about various aspects of the incident. But no one had ever put the story together into one big book. And that was what I hoped to accomplish with guests of the Ayatollah. I constructed the book, Guest of the Ayatollah, by envisioning it really as a layer cake. And there are three essential pieces of the story that I kind of pictured stacked on top of each other. The main story to me was the story of captivity, the story of the hostages who were trapped in Iran for 15 months, wondering if they were ever going to get home alive. And the second part of the story was the story of the rescue mission, which was in planning stages from the day of the takeover all through the uh, six or seven months prior to the rescue attempt. So that military part of the story, which was very distinct and taking place far away from the captivity in Tehran, was the second main element. The third was the story of the quiet and public diplomatic efforts made by the Carter administration to resolve the uh, standoff peacefully. And that involved members of the Carter administration, the president, and a number of the people who were involved in the back-channel negotiations. So the challenge in writing Guests of the Ayatollah was to fully report all these three layers of the cake and then find a way to smoothly integrate them so that it read as a single compelling story. I did hundreds of interviews uh, in preparation for writing guests of the Ayatollah. In fact, this is the first project I've ever worked on that I had substantial help with. I was working with a researcher who works with me at the Atlantic Monthly named Terence Henry, and I was also working with uh, documentary filmmaker David Keane and with my son Aaron, who worked on or other produced and wrote ultimately the documentary film. So all of us were interviewing people all over this country. We were, we were tracking down hostages, and uh, members of the rescue mission, members of the Carter administration. And then we also went to Iran. I made two trips to Tehran with uh, David Keene, and David went, made a third trip uh, on his own. And we interviewed in Tehran 30 or 40 Iranians who were involved in the takeover of the embassy. It was not hard to find them. The Garogan Girha, as they're known in Iran, most of them fairly notorious figures. Some were high-ranking members of the Iranian government. Others were or had become journalists or editors. Some had been in and out of jail for being critics of the regime. It was fascinating work uh, to find them, both to get their side of the story about what happened 25 years ago, but also to explore how they feel about it today and where they are in their lives today. And they fell into very interesting camps. Some of them at this point feel that the takeover of the embassy was a huge mistake and are ashamed of having participated in it. Others continue to be extremely supportive of it and think of it as a pivotal moment in their uh, revolution. Uh, and I think probably the bulk of them are somewhat ambivalent. They look back on it with a mixture of pride and regret. But the uh, total of interviews probably is in the hundreds. I've never actually counted all of them. I was, however, beneficiary of a treasure trove of interviews that had been conducted with the hostages by Tim Wells, who wrote a book called 444 Days, which was an oral history of captivity. And he did lengthy interviews with about 30 
of the returning hostages within a year or two after coming back when all this was still very fresh in their memories and then donated the transcripts and the tapes for those interviews to the Duke University Library. So when I went down to Duke and discovered that uh, a lot of the spade work for the story had been done, I was really grateful to Tim Wells and to Duke for making all that material available. In some cases, those were interviews with hostages who have since died, so it was the only opportunity that I had to get their story. Interestingly, uh, just before I left for Tehran on my first trip, I was fortunate to sell the movie rights to Guest of the Ayatollah to the producer Scott Rudin. And this was a story that was reported in the Hollywood press and picked up around the world. So that when I arrived in Iran, there were actually little stories in the newspaper there about this major motion picture that uh, was going to be made about the takeover of the embassy. And this actually, I think, really helped me because whereas in truth I was just a writer beginning work on what was going to be a five-year-long project to research and write a book, um, it was already kind of seen in Iran as a fait accompli that a movie was in the works. It opened some doors for me. I think everyone was curious to meet this Hollywood guy. Guest of the Ayatollah is very relevant today because we're engaged all over the world in a war, really, with Islamic fundamentalism, certainly with uh, militant Islamic fundamentalism. And the roots of that conflict for our country really go back to the takeover of the American embassy in Tehran in 1979. The Islamic revolution in Iran created the first theocracy in modern times. So if you listen to the story of Guest of the Ayatollah, I think you'll get a much better understanding of the roots of the anti-Americanism in the Islamic world. Some of it is a result of American foreign policy over the last 50 years, and some of it stems from their own religious beliefs and I think the fear that the modern world is eroding the religious traditions which have always guided life in the Middle East and, and the Near East. So the story is a kind of case study that I think sheds a lot of light on the nature of the conflict in which we're engaged.